My research has to do with the problems people have after brain damage. For example, with reading or with remembering or learning. And I've recently begun studying two people who have a very unusual problem. Their ability to see the world is normal, but when they look at letters or digits, they look blurred or distorted. What caused the difficulty was that I had a stroke in April 2011. And ever since then, I haven't been able to see regular letters. In 2010, I started to lose the ability to see numbers. I'm an engineering geologist, and so um, most everything I do is number related. And so um, obviously it was a real problem. Their knowledge of words and reading and mathematics is perfectly intact. So it's a very category specific perceptual problem. And uh, by studying what's happening here, by trying to understand how this can happen when something goes wrong, we're learning more about how the brain works normally. And we're doing that with a variety of methods. One is just what we call behavioral testing, where we give them things to look at and they tell us what they see. We're also using functional magnetic resonance imaging, or fMRI, to try to get more of a picture of what's happening in the brain. And in addition to trying to understand from a research point of view, we've tried to see if we can find some ways to help Amun and Randy to work around the problems that they're having. The basic approach is to try to replace the characters that they're having trouble seeing with alternative or surrogate characters. So for Randy, we created a whole new set of digits for him. Each of them has various lines that make up a particular pattern and so has a particular value. And we've uh, created a calculator app for an iPod, and that allows him to do his calculations on the calculator in the new digits. For Moon, we found that if we did something quite simple, which is just to put two horizontal lines through each letter as if you were crossing it out twice, then suddenly this girl who had been almost completely unable to read for two years was suddenly able to read again. And we began this work in a small way before the Science of Learning Institute was launched. But now that we have funding from this institute, we can reach out more broadly to try to find other individuals who have this problem or a similar problem, including children who may have learning disabilities. The Science of Learning is uh, an initiative that spans multiple levels, like the actions of individual neurons in the brain and how they communicate with each other to understanding how our classrooms organized. And I have to say that Mike's work, interestingly, spans many of those levels. I very much enjoy all of the research I do from a scientific standpoint because it's extremely fascinating. But this project has been extremely special. Just having the opportunity to really help the people who suffer from these kinds of problems and to make a difference in their lives. I was just so fortunate that I had such a great group of people that knew what they were doing. And I cried because it was so exciting. Finally, we found a hope and my Michael, my close kid, I bless him every day. <laughs>